Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between FC Barcelona and Athletic Club. And in this game, Barcelona has won 2-1 at the Camp Nou. We finally did it. We have beaten a strong team, a strong Athletic Club side. And looking at the overall performance coming from this Barcelona team, it was a great performance. We have been waiting for Barcelona to perform in this way. And we're finally looking like we are building towards something truly, truly truly special in this season. So if you guys are new here, the way that we are going to be formatting this video is that we are going to be talking about first half and then the second half and then give my overall review of this whole game. But let me tell you guys, coming out of this game, it was a very important three points. We needed these three points because we have seen other teams struggle throughout the league season and we have to take advantage of the other team's horrible form. And in tonight's match, Barcelona did exactly that. So starting with the lineup, looking at this lineup here, we can see that we have started with a great strong starting 11. I had absolutely no complaints about this starting 11 but the only question that did arise from the starting 11 was that Pjanic was starting in the lineup and I was expecting Sergio Roberto to come in and start against Athletic Club but Ronald Koeman wanted Pjanic and with Pjanic being in that starting 11 the main question was was Pjanic going to play as a pivot or, a, or as a interior midfielder but obviously as we saw the game Pjanic was being handed the role of a interior with in the midfield because let me tell you guys if Pjanic were to play as a pivot in that midfield it would be a complete disaster but overall it was a great lineup I had no complaints I do think that this was the right lineup moving forward up against Athletic Club but now going into the first half I'm going to be very honest with you guys but I honestly did believe that Barcelona were going to go up against Athletic Club going on a slow start something that we have seen Barcelona do so constantly throughout this season but in this game that was not the case Barcelona played with high intensity they played with a very high tempo and it really was showing on the field who was in charge of that game and it was FC Barcelona. Barcelona as a whole as a collective were doing very well when it came when it came to intercepting the ball when it came to having successful pressures on the field and not allowing Athletic Bilbao to play on the field. Bilbao were really struggling on trying to play their own game at the Camp Nou but what I believe was truly key within this game and we're going to go very tactical within this key point because I do think that what was very key in this game was how Ronald Koeman placed Frankie de Jong on the field because in this game Frankie de Jong was functioning as the pivot in that midfield and so because he was handed that role there were many times where Ronald Araujo was receiving the ball from that defensive line and one of the players that was dropping between Samuel Umtiti and Ronald Araujo was Frankie de Jong and the main reason why he was dropping that deep it was because he wanted to give Araujo that comfort that he was going to be there to distribute the ball. Araujo right now is not the best player when it comes to distributing the ball into the wide area is like on the right wing or on the left wing which is the which is again the reason why Frankie de Jong did drop back is to give that extra security and so with that tactical tweak coming from Ronald Koeman that did two things it was one like I said before it gave better ball distribution from the defensive line something that Barcelona do highly depend on when it comes to playing their own game and the second thing which I believe is the most important key point is that it really gave the opposition Bilbao a very hard time to pressure the defensive line because when Frankie de Jong was there between Samuel Umtiti and Araujo it was a five-man defensive line and one of the players eventually from the opposition had to pressure one of the center backs and once they did that it gave Barcelona one option to pass into the midfield and that is what Barcelona wanted to do they wanted the opposition to press the defensive line in order for the midfielders to be open and that is what gave the Barcelona team a huge advantage on the field and besides Frankie de Jong when he did not have the ball the main center back that was in charge to distribute the ball was Samuel Umtiti. Samuel Umtiti in the this game was world class. Every play that did start from the defensive line came from Samuel Umtiti. And I do think that if Umtiti continues to play in this way and he continues to better his form, he is going to be one of the best center backs in Barcelona. And I'm happy to see that Samuel Umtiti is really progressing as a player because we really did need a center back such as him. And so on the ball, he was showing that he was extremely solid. His passes were superb and off the ball, he was doing extremely solid also. This is a player that does want to go back into the world class stage this is a player that wants to prove that he is one of the best center backs in the world and he did provide that against Athletic Club and as for Ronald Araujo he was very attentive as always making great defensive plays and I remember when Ronald Araujo was having that interview a couple of days ago and he was explaining how Ronald Koeman did greatly help on how he defended on the field because Koeman was a player that did play as a center back for FC Barcelona about 25 years ago and I'm happy to see that Koeman is trying to implement what he has learned as a center back of Barcelona 
Barcelona to Ronald Araujo because what ends up happening in the end is that once you do implement those type of defensive duties and what you have learned to Ronald Araujo it is also going to be translating towards the other players in that defensive line and so look I don't know if you guys have noticed but the majority of the time so far in this video I am talking about the defensive line and I think that that is very important because Barcelona was a team that needed a great defensive line and a defensive line that they could trust because you know what ends up happening in the end Barcelona ends up being in control and when you do have a team that's in control of the game your attack is also going to perform much much better and that is what we did see on the other side of the pitch we saw Messi and Pedri working great together outside the box I even did say here on Twitter and I quote there has been great plays between Messi and Pedri and you can see that Messi's first choice is to always look for Pedri to create around the box and I'm happy to see that I'm happy to see that Pedri is becoming a very important player not just for Barcelona but but for specifically Lionel Messi and if you're going to be chosen as a important player and as the first choice during plays coming from Messi that is also a huge compliment and coming out from all of this seeing how Barcelona were so convincing on the field on the 19th minute we did see Messi score a beautiful free kick goal it was such an amazing goal to the point where I do believe that that is probably one of the best free kicks he has scored in his career and I do believe that this is also a response to Luis Suarez because Luis Suarez earlier today did score a free kick goal with Atletico Madrid and so I do believe that Suarez and Lionel Messi are communicating in some way I do believe that Messi is probably looking at Suarez and saying, all right, Pet, I can do that too. I'm going to do this against Athletic Club. And I'm liking that friendly and healthy competition between Luis Suarez and Lionel Messi because even though they do not see each other on the field or speak to each other on the field, they're speaking each other through football. And that is Messi scoring for Barcelona and Luis Suarez scoring for Atletico Madrid. It is a great thing to see. And with this goal coming from Lionel Messi, according to Apta, it says here, Lionel Messi has scored his 650th goal with FC Barcelona in all competitions. 49 of those goals came from a direct free kick. What a goal from Lionel Messi. Now I want to go into the second half. And I'm not going to go too into detail on what did happen in the second half. I'm going to be more goal focused within the second half performance. Because in the second half, to basically summarize it up, Barcelona and Athletic Club were very leveled. And that does not mean that Barcelona dropped a level. What ended up happening was Athletic Club upped their level. And we were in a position where we were eventually going to see Athletic Club score their goal. Because Athletic Club were showing strength within the first 10 minutes and about four minutes later into the second half we did see Athletic Club score their first goal at the Camp Nou but it says here according to the stats that this was an own goal coming from Jordi Alba and to be very honest looking at this goal again coming from Athletic Club the one thing that I do not understand is why Jordi Alba continues to let himself commit such sin in football like why do you continue to get ran over in that way and I know that Athletic Club knew exactly what they were doing Athletic Club did try their one thing that they know the best and that is to make those crosses into the box because our defensive line especially for Longley and Jordi Alba they cannot defend any crosses they cannot defend any set plays and Bilbao did know that and that is exactly how they did score up against FC Barcelona and it's very hard to see Jordi Alba score that own goal because he does such a great job when it does come to going up forward and contributing into the attack but when it comes to defending Jordi Alba completely dismantles FC Barcelona but the bright note I would take away from this which was immediately after this own goal was that Barcelona continued to fight Barcelona did not put their arms down this is something that we did see in the previous matches especially against Athletic Club where every time Athletic Club did score Barcelona looked like they were afraid Barcelona looked like they did not want to play up against Athletic Club but in this game it showed that Barcelona has progressed Barcelona continued to control this game and wanted to gain possession and create plays in their final third area and that is a huge improvement coming from Ronald Koeman is FC Barcelona and later in the game we did see Sergio Roberto come in for Pjanic I did expect Sergio Roberto to become as a central defensive midfielder under Ronald Koeman and have Frankie de Jong play a more advanced role because we did need an extra attacking threat coming from Frankie de Jong later in the second half but eventually on the 74th minute we did see Antoine Griezmann score for FC Barcelona again which did lead Barcelona to 1 and it did come from a great assist coming from Minguesa I did not expect Minguesa to run down the pitch and assist like that for Antoine Griezmann it was a great goal it was a goal where it did look like it was a Barcelona goal I'm happy to see that Koeman is really trying to make this team play as a collective and with this goal coming from Antoine Griezmann he continues to show why he is so important for this team like no we're not going to see that Griezmann that we did see with France or Atletico Madrid we're going to see the Griezmann that plays in a Barcelona shirt 
he is still very important, but not in the way that many want him to. And with this goal coming from Antoine Griezmann, in the past eight games, he has scored a total of five goals and provided four assists, which is a huge statement coming from Antoine Griezmann. But that's going to be it, right? That is going to be the summary of the first half in the second half. I do believe that overall, this was a great display coming from Barcelona. Dembele played well, Pjanic played well, sometimes Jordi Alba played well, Minguesa played well. These are all players who are really up in their game, especially for Dembele. I feel very sorry to see that Dembele cannot contribute in any way when it comes to being on the score sheet or providing an assist, but those things are going to come. You can see that Dembele has been working very hard on the field to contribute in some way. I do want to give some appreciation towards the young Frenchman. And the other thing I do want to say is this. Yesterday, we did see a report come out saying that Messi is completely sucking away the life away from FC Barcelona because he does charge 560 million euros every four to five years. And that report really did make Lionel Messi look like the bad guy. There were so many people on the media saying that, so this is what Messi is to Barcelona? Just a, t just a guy that likes to take away money from this Barcelona team? No wonder Barcelona is so bankrupt. But that is not the case, right? You and me know. For those of you guys who are watching here, every person that follows Barcelona know exactly why Barcelona is bankrupt. It is not because Messi charges 550 million euros on a four to five year contract. It's not because of that. It is because of a multitude of other things that Bartomeu has done in this club when it comes to negotiating the deals and the fees to these players to negotiating the salary for every year of these players. There were many poor decisions that were being made in the past four to five years. But in this report coming from El Mundo, they want to say that the only reason why Barcelona is bankrupt is because he charges 550 million euros every four to five years. But that is not the case, my friends. Messi is a player that deserves every ounce, every euro wearing the Barcelona shirt. So do not be fooled when you do see that type of title. There is going to be trolls out. There is going to be people saying that Messi should leave and he should go to a different club because that, El Mundo, whoever's in charge of that, that is what they want. They want to see Lionel Messi move away from FC Barcelona. They want to see this Messi and Barcelona relationship end in a very bad ending. And as of now, when it does come to this situation here, there has been many reports stating that the lawyers of Lionel Messi is going to be wanting to sue either Bartomeu, Tusquets, or the other board members within Barcelona because this type of information that we are currently seeing is not normal. The type of details and the type of information that's out there in the cover of a newspaper is something that's extremely confidential. And the only people that know about what Messi is getting paid within his new contract are the people that are running La Liga, the people that are running Barcelona, and the ex-president. Those are the only people that know about these details. And so the fact that El Mundo knows exactly how much Messi is getting paid, one of these people is putting out this information just for the sake of having tension between Lionel Messi and the club. I have no idea. There is so much conspiracies going on right now, but something is not right and Messi's lawyers is taking action. But regardless of that, I do see a very motivated Messi going up against Athletic Club. He was doing extremely well. He was pressuring. He looked very angry. He looked like he wanted to make something for himself and he wanted to prove that he can still contribute for this Barcelona team. And let me tell you guys, when we, when we do see a motivated Lionel Messi, we do get the best version of Lionel Messi. But that is it. Barcelona is in second place within La Liga. Barcelona are 10 points behind Atletico Madrid. We still do have a lot of work and a lot of games left within this season, but we can't do it. It's going to be a very tough road ahead of us. But for a team who was in eighth place a couple of months ago, that is now in second place, I do want to applaud Ronald Koeman's FC Barcelona. They have been doing a great job so far in 2021. But that's going to be it for today's Barcelona post-match review. Let me know what is your favorite moment coming from this game. What, what was your least favorite moment coming from this match? Let me know in the comment sections down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.